Alright, so we are back here for part two on this little Evo chopper. Um, if you guys aren't around this bike and haven't seen the first video, jump back over and have a look at that thing. Um, I basically just got this bike as like a running, riding sort of a deal, the swing arm, like had split tanks and stuff. Um, the owner just wanted it like, he wanted to go chopper with the thing, so I basically just blew the whole thing apart. Um, I hacked off the swing arm rear end and I fabricated this rigid rear section from scratch. Basically the video is just going through and showing you how to fabricate one of these things at home. Like I can give you all the dimensions, all the measurements, all the angles, everything you need to make one. So if that's something you want to do to your chopper, I feel like most people do want to do that to their bike. So you want to get back and you want to watch that guy first. But basically in this video, I take it from the bare bones, like just put the rear section on it on the jig. I take it from there and I turn it into this roller that is ready for paint. So I just basically go through, I mount everything, get everything where it needs to go. Like I've got to remount all the oil bag and the gearbox and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, let's stop talking about it. Let's rewind a bit and I'll show you how I did that. Rewind back to this point a few weeks ago where I have just finished up doing most of the rear end on this thing and I've just put the engine in, the training in, all of the primary side in, I've whacked the tank on, you know, I've got the oil bag in here, got the rear wheel on, I've got it up in my jig here, just want to see sort of how it fits, make sure everything goes in. Usually you're not going to have electric start with a full alloy primary and a horseshoe oil bag in these things So I just wanted to make sure it all fits and it fits mint So I'm going to go through now. I'm going to start doing some mounts for things like I'm going to start mounting the oil bag I'm going to start mounting the rear guard. I'm going to start doing all those little bits and pieces get this frame pretty well ready for paint so Before I get into that, let's go have a look around. I'll show you how tight this thing in and how nice it fits Alright, so as you can see, I've just got stuff sitting on there, like it's just mocked up, nothing's bolted in yet, I haven't mounted anything yet, I just wanted to show you how close this thing is. Like I've just spaced some things with a bit of steel and stuff, that's basically where it's going to be. You can see how tight it is above the gearbox with the electric start and the clutch arm and all that stuff. So all that fits super nice. Um, this tank I'm going to have to do a bit of work to because it's like a deep, stupid Jones style thing and obviously it clashes on everything so I'm going to have to fix a bit of that. Um, on the primary side, like I said, I've got all the alloy in here now that fits super nice Like look how close the oil bag sits on that. So that is the perfect spacing and alignment on that That is mint. All this fits perfectly nice um, I'm gonna probably push the rear wheel back yet to sort the guard out, but that's all cool So that's pretty well it. I'm gonna go through I'm going to start doing some mounts and stuff for the oil bag first, I reckon. I'm going to get rid of all the rear guard and all that stuff and just do the oil bag, then work that out. So I'm just going to time lapse that. Let's do it.
So that is the front mount on the oil bag all sorted. It was a pain to get in there and tack that, but that is it tacked. Um, super stoked on how cool these 85 soft tail oil bags are with the vintage style hard lines with this cool little rubber grommeted holder for them. Stoked on these oil bags, they're cool as. So now I want to get to the back and mount the back of the oil bag right. So I was leaving this part out for a reason. So this is the brace between the two and that's what we're going to mount to the rear guard to and the oil bag. So I want to make it easy to mount both of them in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the rear wheel back on and then work out where the guard's going to be and then I'm going to put that in a nice spot so they both can mount off it easily. So I'll go through, put the wheel in and then we'll have a look. Alright, so I have my rear wheel back in here now. It's pretty much where I've wanted it. I haven't done my axle adjusters yet, so um, I've just got some little spaces in here so that I know the wheel is square to the axle plates, and then I'm going to mount the rear guard off the wheel. So you can probably tell I've just got the normal chain off this bike around the tyre, and that's going to be my spacing for the guard. You find a lot of people fucking put their guards on and they don't leave enough space and when you're doing highway speeds or faster, these tires expand, so they get bigger. So you can't just fucking slap your guard on and give it a few mil and call it good. Because they expand quite a bit. I usually put like, I don't know, a 10 mil gap or a 3 8 gap or something in there. So a chain, if you lay it over your tires, usually enough gap. So that's what I always do, I've never had an issue. So. You just lay your chain over it once you've got your desired fit. Um, I think with a rigid oil bag you'd probably be right, but because this is a soft tail oil bag, it's a bit longer and it fouls at the back on the tire. So I've had to push the tire a little bit further back just to make it a bit longer so that I can fit the guard, but it pretty well fits. So you just slide your guard over your chain down to where you want it to live. So it's pretty tight, which is how I want it. And then my little uh, mount down the bottom is going to need a bit of a spacer, but that's no huge deal. But when you get, when I come to finding where my guard likes to be, I use these straps heaps. So these things are a hydraulic hose strap. So you probably saw me use it to mount the oil bag. These are real handy for getting stuff in the right spot, tightening it up, and sure you can do it with a zip tie, but you just gotta keep cutting him where you can reuse this guy. So he is super handy for doing rear guards like this, cause I can put it on there like that. I can slide this to my desired spot and then tighten it up. Tighten it up like that. And then I'll put another one at the front here and that will be pretty well sorted. So I'm going to work this out, I'm going to work out how I'm going to put this rear guard on and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Alright, so I have the guard basically where it's going to live, that's sort of how I like it, it's nice and centre. A um, few things you got to take into account when you're mounting your guard is, first you want to make it nice and rigid. So I usually mount it in three spots. So up the top where the sissy bar comes through, some way mid range, sort of where the oil bag usually is at the top here, and then down the bottom there, sort of where that bottom of the gearbox mount there is. Something else you wanna take into consideration is how you mount it. So sure, you can just have a bolt through it and then a nut, but then if that comes loose, your bolt just goes straight into your tire or if you can't get a spanner in there to do it up, that's also an issue. So I like to usually just weld something to the guard, like a bit of plate or something, and then bolt through that. So if you ever had to do it up on the side of the highway or something, you're not trying to jam the spanner in here or push the wheel off, take the chain off to get enough room to do it up, or you know, the bolt comes loose and you lose the nut, or the bolt goes straight through the tire and ruins your tire. So. I've sort of come to the conclusion that I'm going to put this guy in, I'm going to take the wheel back out, I'm going to put this guy in by itself, and I'll mount the oil bag first. So it's got those little seats there, I'm going to weld this in just above it, and then I'm going to fabricate some bosses that just bolt up from the underneath. So I'm going to go through, take all this apart, fit this and then I'm going to start making those bosses and then we will come back and I'll finally mount the guard. 
I reckon, to the back of the, the oil bag there where that flat plate is. So I'll go through, we'll do this brace first, and then we'll come back to this. So I've gone ahead and made this piece that fits up in here like this. I have it marked and everything. So I have little marks here where it lives. As you can see, quite a nice fit. Um, so I obviously went through and bent this and notched it. So notched with my trusty little notcher and bent it in my bender. For those making this at home, that bend was about eight degrees. So it perfectly copies knuckle pan type deal. So about eight degrees that bend. As I said, I have it all sorted up in here. Little trick for you players at home, if you put a bit of flat underneath where you want to weld it in, it'll make sure it's perfectly flat when you tack it in. So I'm gonna go through and tack this in perfectly flat like that, and then we'll get to making these little bosses that support the back of the oil bag. All right, so I have this thing in here, it's fully square. I just used my rule, measured down to the axle plates and made it square off the axle plates and it became square with the oil bag, which tells me that it's in the right spot. So I am tacking this without the, um, the tower between it. So this will get a little bit smaller, but all you gotta worry about is when you weld it out, you have a space in between here. Otherwise, when you do these welds on the inside here, this will become super narrow. So I'm just tacking it so it'll be right. Alright, so these are the little bosses that I made. They just uh, notched one side, threaded through and they live just up here like so. So we put them in there like this, just like that, and then we bolt through them and that is how the oil bag's mounted. So I'll go through and weld that out now. All right, so there you have it. My two rear oil bag mounts are now done. So that is pretty well all the mounts for the oil bag now. I've got three, right? So I've got one at the front and two at the back, and that is gonna be heaps to hold that in. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the wheel back in here and I'm gonna set up the rear guard so that we can work out where we're gonna mount this. Like I said, I reckon I'm gonna mount it off this flat on the back of the, the uh, oil bag here and bolt through this direction. And then hopefully the battery will still fit with the bolt heads. And then it'll be easy to take on and off if you ever had to. So I'll go through and do that and we'll come back. So wheel on, guard on. Um, while it was out, I drilled the holes in the back of the oil bag here and I buffed the paint off the rear guard. And this is the little piece that I made. So this is just a bit of threaded flat that I made. So it's just a bit of flat with two holes in it that I've threaded. So it has two bolts in it. Um, it probably doesn't need to be this thick. I've only made it this thick so that the thread is extra strong in there so you never strip it because I'm gonna weld this to the guard. But general rule of thumb, you want your material as thick as the bolt you're using. So say this was a six mil bolt, you'd want six mil material. So that is the usual rule of thumb. So that's what I've gone with. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna bolt this guy in here where it belongs, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna weld this to that. All right, so I have my little plate bolted in position in my oil bag here. I have the rear guard exactly where I want it to live. So now it's time to tack it on. So I made this little filler piece here, and I'm gonna put that on the top of this piece onto my rear guard, and I'm gonna tack it there. It'll probably be easier for you to see after I tack it. Try not to burn myself here. Alright, so as you can see, I've just got it 
a few little radius on the side, a nice little packer there, and then I'll be able to tack this in position and then take the rear guard out, and then I'll be able to tack the other side of this plate down the bottom. So I'm just gonna go through and tack this in a few places, and then I can take this rear guard off. Alright, so I have plenty of fucking weld on that now. I'll be able to take my bolts out, take my rear guard out, and then I can weld the underside and make sure that piece is firmly in position. I'm going to leave all this as it is, so when I tack this piece, take the guard off, tack it underneath, and then put it back on and make sure it's in the same spot before I weld it out. So let's go and do that. Alright, so that is pretty well that mid mount on the guard all sorted. I tacked the back of it as you saw and I've put it back on and it fits perfectly. So when I come to welding this out, I'll just fill the sides of it and then weld it the whole way around. And then it'll look nice and uniform when I paint it. So that's that one sorted. Now the next one we have to deal with is this one at the back of the gearbox here. This little folded plate that I make. So I'm going to do that with just a little bit of threaded stock here. So I've just made this, fits straight in there like that. So I'm going to put the bolt through and then I'm going to weld it all the way around on the guard and that'll be the bottom mount sorted. And then I'm going to come along and do this rear mount where the sissy bar comes through. I have a sissy bar that I have has been already used on the swing arm and I'm going to modify it to fit this. So I'll show you that after I weld that on. Alright, so I have me bottom mount tacked now, so that's all sorted, mount's all sorted, that's good to weld out. Middle one's good to weld out. Now, while I've got it like this, I have a sissy bar that's already half made for this when it was a swing arm, so I'm just going to modify this and make it suit this now, because it already has, like, the bolt holes and stuff, like... This is not how I would have made a sissy bar. It's pretty thin, like it has a, stre a stress fracture in it already. And being so thin and wobbling around, usually I'd use a 5.8 or a 16 mil rod to do this. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it because he's got it. Let's not spend too much money and time on this and let's use what he's got. So I am gonna time lapse this. I'm gonna use this bolt hole up here and then I'm gonna chop this bottom piece and re-weld it using the actual sissy bar spot on the axle plates. So I'll time lapse that and show you. Alright, so I finished up the sissy bar. As you saw, I was able to just cut this bottom lug off and then weld it back on in the right spot. So that's pretty well finished. Just need to final weld that and polish it again. I did notice a stress fracture here when I was welding it, so I might put a little something in there to stiffen it up, but I'll worry about that later. So now on to the next thing. I was a bit lost last night, so I had a beer and I've worked out a little list of things I want to finish before I paint it. So I call that stage one, all the fabrication and everything before paint, I call that stage one. So next I want to do all the axle adjusters and wheel spaces. So on the back here, obviously this was all on the soft tail bike and I want to convert it all over onto this this rigid. So what I want to start with, I'm going to machine these axle adjusters. These are the locators that locate the axle in the axle plates. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger. I think this is an inch and that's three quarter. So I'm going to go through, I'll show you. I'm going to machine them out of some steel because they need to be pretty strong. And then I'm going to put the adjusters on here and then we'll come to doing all the brake and all the little spaces in between here. So let's get started on those.
All right, so obviously I have my wheel off here. I have my little threaded bar that you just saw me make. Um, so these are the first part of the axle adjusters that I made. They obviously go in there. This is the three quarter axle. Goes straight through like that, no worries. Obviously I got a little dimple here. So these guys will literally just weld on here like that. And then a bolt will go through and push on that bit of the adjuster. So as you can see, I've just got this line that I've put on here and I've got that on both sides and that is my center line. So that's where I want to weld this. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to tack that on the end there and then I'm going to screw a bolt into it and then make sure that it's level. I can measure top and bottom and make sure the bolt is dead straight in the axle plate and then I'll weld this out. So I'm just going to time lapse that, not real interesting. And then we'll come back to start doing the spaces on the inside. Alright, so I have all my axle adjusters on there now. Both sides are tacked on there just in case I want to change something. I just have these short bolts in here for mock up so don't whinge to me about that. They will get longer bolts for adjustment. So now we want to start working out the spaces between the axles, right? So the rear wheel's fixed. So I'm obviously going to incorporate the original brake off the swing arm bike. So this is gonna be too wide to fit in this now. So I'm gonna to have to modify this brace a bit. So the easiest way to work all this out is to put this in first, make that right, and then do that side. If you start on this side, then you're trying to take stuff off this side, it gets a bit ugly. So start with the hard side and then make the easy side. Because if you mess this side up, it's easy to make another spacer, not easy to find another one of these. So the best way to start this is you want to get your wheel center to the axle plates already. So this is what I've got here, center to the axle plates. And then I can measure from the axle plate to, to the brake like this. So that is 30 mil, right? So when I put this in, I know this is going to be too wide. So when I put that in, push it all the way up, and then I'm going to measure this again. And that's going to tell me how much to take off that. And then I know once I've taken it off that, the wheel's going to be center when I put it all together. So I'm going to go through, whack that in, and then we'll measure it. All right, so I have the rear brake caliper in here now. I really like running in between these rear legs. It looks way neater than it being up the top or like out the back or something stupid. Especially when it's up the top, you have to fucking worry about the sissy bar and all that crap. Looks super neat between there. But the only thing you have to watch is you have to have a look where your bleed nipple is. Your bleed nipple has to be the highest point of your piston. If your bleed nipple is lower than the highest point, you'll get bubbles in the top and you'll never bleed it. So I'm lucky I have a bleed nipple at the top here, so that's sweet. So that's where I'm going to run that. I've got heaps of room, so that's where I like it. So if we have a look, you can see that the wheel is super far over that way now. All this is clashing and this is massive. So as I said, all we got to do is measure this. The last measurement was 30. This one's 35. So that tells us we need to take 5 mil off the outside of the brake caliper um, mount. So I'm going to show you how to do that without a mil. I'll do it in my trusty little way. And then we will be able to do the other side. And then that is pretty well it for the spaces. Then we just have to make a little stay for this brake caliper to push on when you're braking. So, let's get to it. All right, so I have my brake caliper here pulled apart. I just took the brake part off. This is obviously the mounting plate. Um, so what I've done, I've made a boss, right? And the boss taps into here, just like this. So that bangs in there like that. And I'm going to put this in the lathe now on this side and machine the 5mm we need to machine off that side. So obviously that was a nice press fit so I can put this in the lathe and don't have to worry about this shooting off. And I'm going to machine my 5mm off that and then we'll be good to put it together. So now I can spin this thing and take the 5mm we need to take off this side. So I'll just go ahead and do that and time lapse it. All 
Alright, so there you have it. That's it, machine. Sometimes this stuff is just easier without a mill. That was so much easier. All you had to do was machine up a boss and away it goes. No welding, no nothing. Just pressed in. So now all we need to do is knock this thing back out. Just like that. So there it is, no welding, no nothing, machined perfectly. So let's put this in and see how it goes. All right, so it breaks in, it fits mint. So don't worry too much about the top. I gotta move the sissy bar over a bit, but if you look down the guard there, you can see that it lines up nicely with the wheel. Exactly the same, both sides. So that is in the right spot, I'm happy with that. So last thing is measuring this last spacer to put in. So pretty easy, you just wanna chuck your rule in there. So we're working with like 15 mil. So you will have bearing crush as well. So sometimes it's nice to go like a mil more and then if you got a bit of bearing crush, it's all good, it takes it up. If not, you can always take a bit more. But I know my axle plates are a little bit wider than they should be, so I'm just gonna go with the 15, and hopefully the bearing crust just fixes that up. So I'm gonna machine this last spacer, and then let's put this thing together, we'll lock it up, and hopefully the wheel spins freely. All right, I just made that quick little spacer there, and this thing is a go. So that's fully tight now, so that tells me that all the spacers are working, it's spinning on the bearings, and this old brake has just not enough clearance here, but that's got nothing to do with what I did because I haven't changed anything here. So this was already like this on the swing arm bike. So I might just do something a little bit dodgy when I pull this apart because this disc needs to go that direction. So I might just take a little skim off the inside of the disc in the lathe and then make it go that way a little bit. Just a little bit of a skim will give that a bit of a clearance and stop that noise. But either, other than that, that is it done. All the wheel spaces, adjusters done. So I can tick that off me little list here. Thanks for coming. So the next thing I wanna do is rear brake and gearbox kicker support. So obviously, because I made this rear end, I don't have the kicker support here. This is very needed. This stops all the force going through the gearbox and through the frame when you kick it. So definitely need one of them. So I'll do that next, and I'll do this stay for the brake caliper. So I'm just gonna do like a little guy here. I'm gonna change that to a bolt with another spacer, and I'll just have a bolt through it. So when you adjust the axle, you undo the axle and you undo this, and then this will slide up and down a slotted hole. So I'm gonna go through and do those two things now. All right, so I made a few little bits here. Um, this is the original uh, brake stay, so that would have sat in there like that. It's just got a flat, and that would have floated up and down in a slot in the original soft tail frame. So I'm gonna do something pretty similar. I've made this little guy, so he's got a slot in him as well. And he's gonna weld to the frame like that. And I'm gonna pick up this bolt hole. I'm just gonna put a bolt through it with this bush behind it. So that'll lock all that up. So you just have to undo that when you adjust the rear wheel and then do it back up. No huge deal. The other guy that I made is the kicker support. So that guy is just gonna bolt and weld under there like that. Just a little bit that I made. I want to get these pressed so they look correct in the future, but this is just a bit of angle that I use for now. So I'm going to go through, weld those two on, I'm going to time lapse it, and then we'll come back and work out what I'm onto next. Have a look at our little list.
All right, so the rear backbone's all chopped out now. Um, obviously, when you cut this out, I want it to finish level with the legs when we're all welded out, said and done, right? So you want to cut this, whatever the thickness of the material you're using to cap it, whatever that thickness is, you want to cut it that thickness below these guys so that when you're all finished, it's dead level with those. So I've just gone ahead and made one quickly. So it doesn't need to be overly thick or nothing. I've just gone with that. That turns out super nice. I put this little flick in the end of it so that when I blend it, I can make that nice and smooth. Looks like it's not supposed to be there. If you just had a solid square edge, it'd probably look like shit. So a little trick to get that little piece, you want to just use a bit of cardboard and you want to just mark this and then cut it out and then transfer it to a bit of steel. Or you can use the bit that you cut as your template and then mark around that and then cut this, then transfer it, then make this. So we chuck that on there. Obviously now I want my seat to fit nice and square. I really need that. So now that see my seat fits nice and flat down the whole backbone, now down the whole rear guard. So that's all mint. So basically what I like to do with these seats, I like to make it so you don't need to unbolt anything to get the seat off because there's nothing worse than needing to do something in here with your wiring or maybe you've got a center fill oil tank and you need to check the oil. Nothing worse than having to unbolt a seat just to get in there to have a quick look. So I like to make them pop out and pop in. So there's a few ways to do this. I can show you the blue Evo that I just finished. If you have a look at the back, this just goes pop like that and then the front slides out. So the way it does that is a little pin at the front that locates and then a pin on an angle at the back. So the pin at the angle at the back slides in that guy and the pin at the front slides in there. So you just line up your pin at the front like this and then this might be tricky with one hand but then you just pop the back in like that and that's done. Your seat doesn't go anywhere, it's fucking super solid. So that's the best way to mount a seat. So I'm gonna do something a little bit similar with this seat but the seat pad on this is not as rigid as the seat that I made for the blue bike. So. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So what I want to do is wherever this is. So the little piece I've cut out to put in here, I'm just going to tack that on to start with because I'm going to drill a hole and make a little slot, little slip in here so that I can make a little slip in joint for the seat. So I'm going to go through and do that and then I'll show you what I did for that. All right, so I've just fused, tacked this so super lightly because I'm going to pull that off again. So the way I'm going to do this seat, right, I need to work out where the ends holes are, right? So when the seat is on there like that, I need to know where those holes are. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this seat clip in like that. So you sit it in, put it into some slots and clip it in like that. So I need to know where these bolt holes are. And the hardest part is working out where that is when it's like this. So a little trick is to make yourself this. So this is the right thread for the seat and then I've just put a point on the end. So all you do is you screw that in like that. So you've got a little scribe now. Put your seat on where you want it. So back there and then you're just gonna scribe this thing like that. So take this off now and there you have it. That is where the hole is. So all you do is find the center of that, center pop, put your hole in, and away you go. So I'm gonna do that on front and back, and then I'll come back and show you what the slots look like. All right, so this is all done. I'll just show you what I've got happening. So this is the little front clip in, and this is the rear clip in. Same thing, just on the guard. And I pulled this front plate off to drill this. All it is, I just marked two points, drilled a larger hole, drilled a smaller hole, and then filed through. So that's super easy to make. Don't think I had a special machine to make that. I just did that with a couple of hand files. And on the seat, this is what we're working with. So I've just got some button head bolts that are hanging out, probably five mil, front and back. And the idea is that the head of the bolt will fall in the large hole and then slot down into the small hole and the head will lock it in. So I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. It's probably easier two-handed, but we'll see what happens. So let's lock this rear one in like that. 
and then we'll lock the front one in. When you do this um, with two hands, it's a little bit easier, but so there it is. So that's locked in. So I can show you underneath the guard, see how the, the head of the bolt locks in like that. So that's how that works. And that is super rigid, like that ain't coming off. Solid is solid. So that is a seat with no bolts, no nothing. So that's easy to pull off now. You want to check your wiring or some shit. So basically now I'm just going to go through, weld out that top dude. Um, and then I think that is pretty well it. Need to have a look at my list, but I think we're pretty well ready to completely pull this down and start welding this out. But let's do this bit first and then get to it. Right, yep, as you just saw, I welded all this up and then shaped it so that's all nice and clean and finished now. Um, in the meantime, I've added this little guy here. So that serves two purposes. A stiffener, as you, if you look at any original frame, they have a casting through here to connect these two legs, make it super stiff through here. And also I made it all flat like this because I'm going to run all my relays and stuff under here for my wiring. So all the wiring comes straight out and straight into the relays. So that'll be super clean doing it like that. So that that's that bit done. And then in my list I've been looking at, I've pretty well done everything. The last little things are like take off this original bracketry for later model frame. That's dead giveaway that it's a later model frame. So if I rip all that off, it's a bit harder to tell. Um, I'll rip this stupid uh, steering lock thing off too. I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to weld the hole up so it was never there. I'm going to fix this little guy here too, make that straight. Try and make this look a bit more early. And I gotta pull this split tank top mount off as well because it's got that stupid small tank on it. So that's gonna go up there. So basically to do all that, I'm gonna have to pull the engine and all the gearbox and bullshit out. So I might as well weld this thing out as well while I'm there. So I'm just gonna time lapse all of this, I reckon, big long time lapse. Me pulling all this down, welding it all out. And then one of the last thing, I've got a test fit near complete bike. So I'm going to completely assemble this bike as much as possible with a tank and have all that bullshit on it and have a nice roller sitting on the ground, see what this thing looks like, and then it's complete tear down for paint. So here comes a big time lapse.
All right, so that is pretty well this thing completely put together now. Um, I got the front end on it, as you saw. Some things are going to happen to this. I don't know why the bars are so stupidly wide like they are. They are fucking dumb. So I'm going to, when I put this back together, take probably two inches out of the center of that to try and narrow them up a bit. Look how silly wide they are. Anyway, we're going to fix the bars, going to shave the lowers so this will be a shaved front end. Um, maybe shorten the tubes yet, not sure. Not really keen on doing that because they're hard to find FLH tubes, but if I can find them, I'll do that. Um, all the rear ends together, oil bag in, all that. I put the foot controls on, um, so they're pretty straightforward. I haven't put all, any of the oil filter or uh, regulator or nothing on that. I haven't put any of that together because I don't need to. Um, pretty well, the only thing left to do is the tank. So, obviously, this is a stupid, real deep tunnel Jones-style thing, and obviously it fouls on the heads all the time. They are fucking the dumbest tanks, and I hate them. Anyway, this seems to be the style that everyone runs over here, so I'm going to have to modify this tank to make the mount fit properly. Now, if this was any worse, I would be cutting the tunnel out and lowering the whole thing so we could get more capacity in these stupidly small tanks. But there really isn't much to gain here, so I'm just going to put another mount in lower and then window patch it up. So I'm going to go through and do that, and then we're going to mount the thing to the frame with some bungs, do it the proper way, and then this thing is pretty well ready for paint. All right, so I started off by making this guy. This is going to be the new fake tunnel piece. So it's going to go in there. And then once I've tacked it where I want it, I'm going to lop this off and then I'm going to close that up with a piece. <laughs> so what I did, I made that pretty well just out of a bit of flat, as you can see, 1.6 mil steel. I just wrapped it around a tube that is the same as the backbone. So that's super easy to do. And then I just shaped it like that. And I've gone ahead and put the hole in the backbone there, as you can see. So I can put that on and then I can do it all up. So I'm going to go through and do that. All right, so that's completely done up now. That's not moving. I can tell that it's straight by looking down at it like that. So we'll get our little tank here and I've made a mark at the back here that tells me where I want it to be. And then as you can see, bolts in and then it's nice and tight on the sides of the tank. So I can have a look underneath, have a look how much room I've got and then just position the tank where I want it, which is pretty well in line with the sides, how I've marked it. And then I'm going to tack it on there as like it is and then take it off, lop this off, and then make the, the filler piece and weld it out. And then I'll go through and drill the holes for this and then put the bungs in the frame. So I might just do a little time lapse and show you that. All right, so that is the tank all sorted out now. Um, I just wanted to get, show you why I did it like that. You see, uh, that whole piece that I folded, I was able to weld it back on the inside of the tunnel like that. And then again, on the top here. So that is gonna be super, super strong. Way better doing it that way than trying to just butt it into the corner here and then you've got a tiny little bit of weld. 
See, I've got weld all along there, all along there, all underneath that and all back along there. So that is going to be strong as hell. And the reason I didn't inset this is because the front of this is pretty funky already. I'm going to bog this so I can bog that and make it look all nice. So now I've obviously already got the front hole sorted. I'm going to drill this back hole in the tank and then I'm going to mark it in the frame and then I'm going to weld it out. I mean, drill it out and tap it. Luckily, I don't have to put a bung in the top or bottom because the top goes through the casting, so that's super thick. And then the back here is going to go through the little bung that I welded in to support the rear end. So if you didn't have a thick steel like that and you were just going into the tube, you want to machine a little bung and weld it in. I've done it a few times in past videos, so you can go back and have a look at that because nine times out of 10, you'll over tighten that like a behemoth and you will strip it. So that's why you do it like that. So I'm going to go through, get the tank mounted and then we're pretty well sorted, I think. All right, so that is the tank completely on and done, finished, complete. Both holes drilled and tapped, happy with how it's sitting, and that is where it's going to live. So that is pretty well the last thing I had to do before it's ready to pull this thing completely apart, polish it up nicely, and then paint it. So obviously, like I said, when I put this thing back together for final fit out, I'm going to be shaving the, the front legs, making this thing a spool, making that all nice. I'm going to be either changing these shit bars or modifying them. Um, I'm still going to be doing some fabrication on the last episode because I still got to do the exhaust. I'm going to do some upsweet stainless like I usually do. I'm getting sick of them. I'd like to do something different, but that is what everyone wants. So that's what he's going to get. So I'm going to go through, do some Evo stuff on that. And then basically just fit this thing out, do the complete wiring. I'll go through complete wiring in the next video because this has got a starter motor. So there's going to be another relay, another bit of shit going on. I'll go through that and show you how to do that. But basically that is the end of this episode. Thanks for uh, watching and I'll see you on the next one.